What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Channel. Paul here today. Obviously we're in my office. We're not in Jeff's little man cave full of baits, but I do have some cool baits to show you today in my much smaller, much, much less bait filled tiny office, not man cave. What I have for you today is three unboxings. Well, technically two unboxings, one unbagging. We'll go with bagging. Two boxes, one bag of what is ultimately a reload for me. So Big smallmouth fishermen up here in Michigan. We do a lot of this. Jeff and I are actually going on a very special trip with the Monster Bass team. Very excited for that. Uh, they are taking us on a trip to a very special place to go search for some gig gigantic smallmouth. When we go to do that, I wanna make sure that I'm prepared. I wanna make sure that I have the baits that I'm confident, the baits that I know catch smallmouth uh, and that can do it in pretty much any situation. So I'm gonna walk you through what a reload looks like for me and then I'll kind of give you some of my other favorites. Now we're gonna mostly focus on plastics uh, and terminal, uh, like terminal tackle. So hooks, um, I do have some weights that I can show you as well. Some of the, the ones that I would pair with some of these. But really, it's going to be all about the plastics. Like, I'm not going to show you the square bills. I'm not going to show you uh, jerk baits. I'm not going to show you any top water, nothing like that. Really just focusing on plastics. But this can be really challenging. And I think, you know, as you learn to target small, smallmouth and as you are around them more often, you start to pick on, up on some of those nuances between largemouth and smallmouth. Where you're like, well, if I'm going largemouth fishing, I'm not necessarily going to take the same size, maybe the same colors, actions, or anything like that as largemouth. Now, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that translate, tons of things that translate. And as a matter of fact, most times you can get away with anything that's in your largemouth arsenal, can fit in your smallmouth arsenal, and vice versa. But I will say this, after a couple of years really heavily targeting smallmouth, especially in the rivers, um, as well as lakes, I, I really do think that there are some plastics that just do a better job of catching smallmouth. So I'm going to walk you through some of those. Now, before I crack open any of these boxes or this bag, I want to first say thank you so much for stopping by the channel. Thank you for liking, subscribing, smashing the like button, ringing the notification bell, all of that stuff. Sincerely, we appreciate it so much. And please come check us out, Jeff and I, Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern for our Burley Fishing Podcast. It's a live stream, it's a ton of fun. We love seeing you there in the comments. We love having people with us uh, to come ask questions of our awesome guests. So please come check us out Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern for that. Without further ado, I'm gonna go top to bottom. I'll start with the top, work my way down. What is on top? Sixth Sense. So this is not a Sixth Sense sack. This is actually just an order that I placed. Uh, there's some product that just came out very recently that I really wanted to try, um, at least that I became aware of, that I really wanted to try, that I thought just looked really cool. I also got a sneak preview in a video that Jeff and I posted a couple weeks back when we were fishing with Ethan, I'm not outdoorsman, from, you know, who manages Mule Fishing or owns Mule Fishing. Um, we did a river trip with him and Jeff handed me one of these. I got to fish it and I immediately had to go and get some. And by these, what am I talking about? I am talking about the Six Sense Stroker Craw. This one though is a 2.4 inch. 2.4 inches versus their normal stroker craw. I actually get one out, I'll get one out for comparison. So just for comparison, here is the 3.3 uh, inch stroker craw and here is the 2.4 inch stroker craw. So here's the 3.3 inch, that's the 3.3. Love the color by the way. This is, the, is their June bug, this is their June bug red. This is basically a purple Christmas tree. It is phenomenal, very cool, um, love this bait. Have a ton, I mean, I have a ton of these in a ton of different colors, love this bait. Let's get down to what I bought. Now this is the 2.4 inch in Mexican Spice. Uh, Jeffrey and I were kind of talking about this. This is basically their, this is basically their Chardeuse, their, their uh, Copper Truce, like what we like from Z-Man so much. Um, you can see there, you get a green pumpkin on top with uh, the flake, the flake is sort of a copper and pepper. It's just a fantastic looking bait. You got the little pen, tiny appendages here, the larger craw appendages. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you break these off so you can really free them up. Now this makes it a swimmable bait just as much as it does a, a, a drag bait. It works very well both ways um, with the, the fine detail here on the, on the appendages. Um, and then you get this tiny body. I mean, this is a pretty minuscule body. Now the bottom, it's chartreuse, right? And so you're getting that sort of what Jeff and I have found to be really effective for smallmouth bass, uh, really absolutely anything that swims uh, is the uh, Z-Man Copper Truce. So this is basically the six cents version of Copper Truce. So you know how to get a bag, probably should have gotten two. Now, why do we like the smaller size? This will catch smallmouth bass. It will. It will also catch largemouth bass. This is a great size. I have a lot of these 3.3s. These are awesome. 
I prefer the smaller size for smallmouth, especially in the river. I just feel like it gets me more bites on smallmouth bass. Now, whether that's because they are they prefer a smaller size bait in general, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's because they have small mouths and that's you know generally what they're gonna chase is forage that matches their mouth size. I'm sure that's probably part of it. But I know that I catch more, more smallmouth bass with a downsized bait typically. I think the other thing to call out is that like, I'm a finesse fisherman. Like finesse fishing is probably a good 30, 40, 50% of all the fishing that I do. When I'm, when I'm sensing the bite is difficult, like my general tendency is to downsize. Maybe it's because I'm in Michigan. Maybe it's because that's how I was taught. All I know is, is that I, I have more success in general when I downsize. I'm not saying that's the only way to fish. Everyone has their own fishing preferences. Everyone's gone out on days and, and upsized and caught other fish. Or maybe you're down south and you have bigger fish and maybe 3.3 is like a small size for you. It probably is, but for where I fish, for the waters I fish, and the situation specifically, mostly river, um, when I'm targeting smallmouth, that downsize presentation has caught me more fish. So that's what I've stocked up on. And when I'm doing uh, a reload, right, when I'm gonna go get some more baits and I'm gonna kinda like reload the tackle box to fit, you know, to, to make sure that I have what I need for like a special fishing trip. Like in this case, going to a special place, gonna target some big fish. Um, what exactly do I wanna make sure I have? I wanna have a light color and a dark color. And I also wanna have like all my confidence color. So that uh, chartreuse green pumpkin, that is a confidence color. Another confidence color is, we were just holding up that like June bug, that bright purple. Um, I've got like a, basically the black and blue version of that. I went with a light color, the chartreuse, and then a dark, on like a natural, to like a dark. So um, this is dark water bug. Again, it's that 2.4 inch craw from Sixth Sense. I'll hold it up for you right there. I'll hold it up for you right there so you can see it. Um, but this is like a really cool take on black and blue. Um, so you get these blue flake purple, um, with just a stunning combo. Now blue flake is a really light blue, kind of like what you would see in a black outstanding color kind of looks like it kind of looks like a popsicle, honestly, um, or maybe like cough medicine. It's a wonderful color looking to try it out. I guess to me, uh, one thing with color, especially in plastics, is like smallmouth seem to key in on chartreuse. Uh, they also seem to key in on purple in the river. So those are colors that I look to incorporate like whenever I can. Um, it's not a try to, it's not an always true. Like sometimes it's black and blue. Sometimes it's, you know, they definitely go after green, green pumpkin and other things. But, you know, I just have seen that those are, again, things that I've had a ton of success with, I find that even if it's just maybe the net head that you're using or the weight that you're using in, you know, for a jig, like if you can just get a pop of color, it's really gonna draw the fish in. It also gives you some other options. So when the water is darker or when it's super clear, um, if you kind of put that chartreuse siren on or when the water's a little darker, um, you put the, the purple in there, um, it's one of those things that's really gonna draw in a fish versus sort of make the fish look at it and think about it. Uh, I find that you know having those accent colors can be the difference between catching a bunch of fish and maybe just catching a few. But really, what else is in the bag? Jigs. These are all of their finesse jigs. So you can check them out right there. Uh, finesse jigs. Now I went with, I think I went with one, two, that's right, so I went with three different color combos. Um, now four jigs, three combos, that means I got two of the same one. And that is this color right, oh, okay, super smooth. Now that is this color right here. And you'll know why when you hear the name, the color is River Magic. If you name it River, Ma River Magic, I have to have at least one, probably get two. These jigs are 5 16 of an ounce each. So I'm gonna crack one open for you and show you, show us what you're dealing with. Now it is a green pumpkin and brown, let's try and get in focus, green pumpkin and brown. Uh, circular, not football headed jig. More of a heavy duty brush guard than I typically see with a finesse jig, but I'm not upset about it. Um, and the, the one thing that I really like is the is the screw lock. Um, it looks a little big, so I'm actually gonna rig one up and see how it goes right now. Uh, but this color is like a green pumpkin and brown, but there's like blue fleck in it. Uh, you can kind of see it here on the green pumpkin portion of the skirt. Pretty stout hook, um, you know, realistically, you're gonna jack a serious jaw with this one. What I like about this and the reason I wanted to get these, not only because it's finesse and it's the right weight that I like for the river and throwing those smaller plastics, um, but when I was looking at these online, I, I was just thinking to myself, like if I got like a, you know, a PB, you know, maybe five, six pound smallmouth, um, I'm not losing that fish on this jig. 
it's not gonna happen. Now, the flip side of that is when you are using a jig like this, that's got a, a little more stout hook, no matter how sharp it is, you're gonna wanna make sure that your medium has enough muscle in it uh, to, to make sure you're driving that hook home. One of my favorite aspects about these jigs is that hand tied skirt with like the nylon versus you know maybe like a rubber uh, rubber band or uh, something heat shrunk on there i love to see these tied on they're so much more durable and they just last longer i love seeing that all right and there it is that is a small compact profile you still get your chartreuse uh, and you still get your natural colors um, now this is a, this skirt i would probably trim just a, a touch so i'd want this to i'd probably take off the last like maybe I don't know, quarter of an inch, just to make sure that the these uh, s very swimmy uh, craws are gonna be doing their job. But that looks pretty good to me. Um, you could go with a little bigger body. I think that screw lock is gonna kind of make you use a bigger body. So I don't know if this is gonna be my primary, um, but this is a really great option. I'm liking this, I'm liking this a lot. Check that out. There's your orange, with the green pumpkin stripe, and then the brown on top. So very similar to very similar to the green pumpkin brown, but it's just got that extra little bit of color. I dig it. So there's your black and blue, very classic, very standard. Um, I love this though. Uh, same again, circular spherical ball head jig, uh, 516, same style, still got the screw lock, same everything else, it's just that black and blue. To me, again, uh, whenever I'm reloading, I need to have like a black and blue or a black or something dark like that, that purple June bug or whatever. And then I also need to have something like lighter, whether that's green pumpkin, white, um, you know, or like a natural shad color, chartreuse, whatever it is, I need to have a light and a dark. So you'll see that a lot as a theme in the reload here. So that is it for the six sense order. Let's get down to the uh, tackle warehouse order. Oh, this is so juicy. Tackle warehouse sticker, first thing in the box. Gotta love to see that. Now the first thing I did was grab something that I've been meaning to try for a really long time but just never pulled the trigger on. I kind of felt like I didn't need it, um, but you know, you see a lot of advertising media, tournament pros, and you know, people that rep the Berkeley brand running this bait, and I was a little on the expensive side. Um, I have no idea about the dur durability. I've never had held this version of these, but I had to get the Power Bait Max Scent. Now, this is the flatworm, um, which I've seen a lot of guys using on drop shots, which is, we talked about it, I'm a finesse fisherman. It's one of the, my favorite ways to fish. I feel like I have to try this out. I have to know exactly what it's all about. So maybe I got like bit by the media bug, but like I had to try it out. So uh, the Power Bait, uh, the Berkeley Power Bait Max Scent Flat Worm. Now this is a, uh, this is a 10 count in this bag. These are seven bucks for a 10 count. So these are not cheap. Um, it's a 3.6 inch worm. I got it in two colors. I went goby and I went, uh, I think just, yeah, black. Goby and black. I'll show you the goby. See the, oh, oh, that is intense. I'm not gonna be able to touch this camera for like a month. All right, so here is your flat worm shape. So you got it basically flat down here at the bottom and then it really trims down to this like little more bulbousy tail and then it's got a ridged body all the way through. Um, it feels like it's fairly durable. Not like super durable but not not durable. These flakes though they stick out like crazy because this body, I don't know if it's if it's because of the Maxent or just like the Berkeley, like you know, whatever formula they use for plastics, but these things stick out like crazy. I mean, this looks, it's purple and gold flake and it looks like a, like if the Minnesota Vikings were gonna make a bait, this is what it would look like. It's great drop shot bait. I just really wanna, golly, it smells like dog food kind of. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how it fishes. Um, I have just, I've heard from a ton of people that this is absolutely the juice when it comes to drop shot and people just absolutely swear by it. And people that I really respect and love to watch fish. So um, especially guys who are really good at fishing like Lake St. Clair or other, you know, smallmouth fisheries. So uh, power bait max scent flatworm. I'll show you the black. I mean, I'll just show it to you. It's the same exact bait. Yeah, let's get this boy open. Cow, that is a substantial package. So there is the black, same body, same ribs, same taper, same trim, flat on bottom, uh, same, oh, same dog food smell. Um, but again, getting that natural and then something really dark like a black. 
All right, so next up is an absolute tried and true classic for me. This is the Pink Z-Man Finesse TRD. Now, the nice thing about these is they are a 2.75 inch uh, finesse version of the original TRD. Uh, my favorite Ned Rig bait, top five, top three, top three, we'll go top three. You'll see Jeff and I run a different version of this one. I'll show you that one in a second, but this is the pink. It's almost white. I mean, you can tell it's just like a very translucent pink. It's an outstanding color. One that I do not throw enough, but I still do throw. So I got two packs, one for Jeff and one for me. Um, two packs would be enough to last you like two years. Uh, these are incredibly stretchy. Like incredibly stretchy like you are not going to be breaking these anytime soon they also they do get waterlogged after a little while and that's when you tend to have one rip off the hook like maybe you would drown one for i don't know a, a week two or three four trips um but I mean, this doesn't lie this just lasts it's a little tough to get on the hook sometimes but once you've got it on these things are staying on they're staying in place and they're gonna keep catching fish i said in a a little bit earlier the there's a different version of that and the copper truce and i've already talked about it it's my favorite color i have plenty of bags of these so i don't need any more but this is that copper truce color so uh chartreuse on bottom and that copper uh green pumpkin on top this is the ultimate bait. Again, super stretchy, lasts forever, awesome bait. Next up in the reload is a bait that I have a bunch of, um, but really you can't have enough of, um, and that is the good old tube. Uh, this is the three and a half inch pro model, um, the coffee tube from Strike King. So it's like a coffee infused, I don't really know if the coffee is what does it or not, or if it's the shape or if it's the, you know, the salt or I, I don't even know, but these things are just loaded with everything. And if KVD's name on it, as if KVD's name is on it, like I know it's good. So I'm going to pull one of these out for you. Um, just salted to the absolute max. Now this one is like a ghost purple. This is just an outstanding tube. Um, if you don't know what a tube is, this whole body is actually hollow. So the entirety of this thing is hollow. Then you get these like phalanges down there at the bottom, just waving around. There are a ton of ways to fish these. And by a ton, I mean a ton. It doesn't seem like it, but there's a whole bunch. Like I will run these, uh, uh, weightless when they don't float. I'll throw them up as high as I possibly can. They'll flutter down, boom, give a big plop. They'll kind of like scissor down. Uh, that's a great way to fish these around like weeds, uh, weed edges, like at the ends of lily pads, like right before the lily pads start. The nice thing is, is that big plop is like an explosion. And as it scissors down, that's when a bass is gonna come in and hit it on the drop. Great way to fish these. You can weight these, uh, what's called stupid style, which is like weedless. And you can run them through the bottom of the river all day long. You can drift them if the weight is just right. Uh, or you can do it the regular style if you find you're not getting good hookups, which I'll show you the regular style right now. So here is a tube jig you can see the weights in the front it's about the same kind of general shape as a jig with the, your tying at the front here's your jig now remember this whole thing is hollow so how am i going to rig this dude it's like the easiest thing to rig ever so all you do is you take your jig i told you i mentioned the whole thing is hollow so i'm just going to shove that weight from the back all the way through and then once i've got it right where i want it based on i can feel right here that tie-in point all i'm going to do is shove it right through and boom good to go so that's like your original. Um, again, there's, there are ways to do this weedless. I actually did one on my Instagram. You go check it out, Paul underscore J underscore glass. I did uh, this version and another version on almost the same tube from X Zone. So go check that out. But that is how, that's like my go-to right there. And I'm just gonna put that one back in the bag. Now I'm gonna go take a shower from all that salt. Next up, we've got another one of my favorite drop shot baits, the Smalley Smasher from Big Bite Baits. Uh, this thing is incredible. I am a huge fan. We talked about that bright color, that chartreuse, that white. So this, instead of getting a flatworm, um, I opted for that super bright color to go with the Big Bite Baits um, Smalley Smasher. Now, as the name indicates, it just does an awesome job of catching smallmouth on the drop shot. Now the cool thing about this bait, look at how ribbed it is. Like I'm not even sure you guys can see that without my hand, but look at how just ribbed that is. Because it's sliced in so far down, you're just gonna get unbelievable action all the way through there. Uh, and then it does trim down to like this wide tail, but it is like silly flat. It's crazy how, I'm gonna try and slow it down here, don't do anything. It's crazy how flat that is. Now, 
I'm gonna rig this the exact same way that I'm gonna rig the flatworm. It's a drop shot. The thing about this one is that it's drop shot only. There's really not another way to rig it, only because, um, I mean, I guess you could stick something through the middle of there, but you're gonna get this bait shredded if it gets bent. So, relatively limited, and again, it's just because even though it's flat, uh, all these ribs getting cut in um, kind of limit the way that you can rig this. So I'm gonna exclusively be like nose hooking this one uh, and using it on a drop shot. But white on bottom, chartreuse on top, deadly action, great bait. $4.99 for a 12 pack. So by far your best value per plastic, except Z-Man's probably your best, it's probably your best bet. Only because it's a little more expensive. It's like, actually those are dirt cheap, four bucks. All right, this is your second best. Four bucks, for, oh my gosh, really? Four bucks for an eight pack? Four bucks for an eight pack of these? That's just, it's not even fair. So even though it feels like I got a lot of terminal tackle, I really didn't get that much. I, could, I bought a few of the same things. Um, again, this is like a reload. So I bought like things that I use very commonly uh, that, I, that I'm just running out of. And the first thing that I bought a bunch of is the Nedlock EWG hooks uh, from Z-Man. These are one sixth, which is, my most used weight. 1.6 and 1.8 are probably my most used weights, but 1.6 is probably by far the one I use the most. Now these are a four pack, but they are, what are these, seven bucks each? These are a four pack, they're seven bucks each, so not cheap, but let me show you why they're worth it. Now why are these worth it? First of all, the painted head, a quality painted head, but then this little neck down part right here where the EWG does the EW part of itself. Um, when it comes down here, this little metal piece that like juts forward, that is like the secret sauce. That keeps baits on the hook so much better, especially when they're elastic. Now these net heads are great when you wanna use a dark bait, but you do wanna add some flash. So let's say you run out of carpet truce. Well, let's say you have a green pumpkin in your, you know, in your bag of plastics. Well, now you can throw this on there. Let me show you a great example. Now here's one, another one of my favorite baits. I did not buy these, but I do have these. These are the finesse uh, tubes. I think these are, the, these are called what, TRT. TRD tubes, so creative. The color is Drew's Craw. So like, let's say I run out of my copper, you know, my, my, my copper truce, which I love so much. Um, I'm like, okay, well, I've got one of these finesse tubes, which again, that's the old Aztec. Now I can rig it weedless, but I can still give it that chartreuse pop that I like so much. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go rig this just like I would do any other weedless bait, except I'm gonna flip it now. I'm gonna pull it past that crazy, weird looking deal. Whoa. And look at that. Now I can go, bam, bam. Now I'm like unbelievably weedless, right? I'll go, I'll rig it proper for y'all. Now I am weedless. I'm still getting like the natural colors that work so well, but I'm also getting, because of that head, I'm getting the pop of chartreuse that I'm really looking for. So that's why I like the chartreuse heads, right? It's just add some flair to what already works. Or if you're using a chartreuse bait, it's just a little bit more chartreuse. So you're just getting more of what you like so much. Um, love the squared off head. I feel like it does such a good job avoiding snags in the river. Um, and then, you know, it's just a great profile. So super, super great. Now it's not only good for elastic, it's good for everything, but it works unbelievably well. This thing is not going anywhere. This bait will last you a long time. So what did I actually buy? I bought two packs of these in chartreuse and then I got two packs of one six and they're green pumpkin. These are my two most used. Again, this is a reload for me. So I'm getting eight of these, but they're not cheap. Now, I think I told you the other weight that I really like to use that I use so much uh, in the river is the one eight. So I went with the uh, the owner hook blockheads. Uh, the reason is I've had these before and they worked unbelievably well. Now, why do I like the blockhead versus, like why didn't I just get the one eighth ounce, um, let me get these open. Why didn't I just get the one eighth ounce, you know, Z-Man uh, uh, hooks, because they're so great. Well, I'm gonna show you something really important when you're dealing with uh, EWG hooks. So these are also EWG. So when you hold these up side by side, the first thing that you're gonna notice is how much different the hook shank lengths are. So you can just see that owner hook has a longer hook shank. Now the nice thing about a longer hook shank is I can tie different baits on. So this is great for your shorter finesse baits, right? That's the EWG uh, Neds, uh, EWG Neds. But this guy right here has a longer hook shank, which means leeches, which I actually fish a ton, 
work really well on this because the hook point goes a little bit further back or if I want a bigger bait or a longer bait, I'm still, I'm able to actually rig that up very well on this longer shank. So that's why I like these a lot. Now the, the, the thing that I like about the owners, not only just make good hooks in general, but you can see that EWG, the angle of it, that where it bends around, it actually cuts back in right, right there. It cuts back in. That, <clears throat> it's not gonna be quite as good as the Ned Locks, but it's pretty darn good. These are great hooks. So I did get one last set of EWG Ned Head hooks. These ones are from Flatlands Tackle. They're a little more expensive. I think they're about eight bucks. They have a rounded head versus the kind of squared off. Um, and for a quarter ounce, I think they have a nice profile. I like that this is a little bit longer versus being bulky. I think that's really gonna help with some of the plastics that I use where I can get like the bulk of the quarter ounce, like where, uh, where I can get like the weight of the quarter ounce without like the bigness where it's bigger than maybe the whole entire plastic is it also has that longer uh, longer shank which I think is really gonna help me out a lot so I'm excited to try these out um, so far the welds look good paint looks good I'm excited to try them so before I get to the last unboxing uh, I want to show you some of the other baits that I would use with some of those hooks and some of my favorite smallmouth baits so that I didn't need to reload up on but I kind of want to show you like what are, what are some other examples of things that I really use all of the time? If you've watched our channel, um, you guys have heard about Nico baits. These are one of my favorite baits. They are a fish safe, uh, basically a, a fish safe Z-Man. So when the, when the fish swallow these, they don't swell up and they're not gonna kill that fish. So if you lose one, um, they also will eventually uh, biodegrade into the water and they're safe for our waterways. That is like the ticket for me. It's something that I'm very passionate about. So I do buy and use these all of the time. Um, my favorite two baits from them, the leech. This is one of my favorites. Now, Morning Dawn is like their purple pink uh, color and that's probably my favorite. This is my second favorite color. This color is called Fusion. Um, check that color out. It is an outstanding profile, um, super duper stretchy, just like that Z-Man, uh, but it's got uh, a ribbed body that really helps you um, find you know like make sure that you're hooking this appropriately so when you lay your hook across you just count the ribs and you can figure out exactly where to place your hook these can be just like z-man a little bit challenging to uh, rig but not the leech the leech is actually pretty easy i think one of the tougher ones is the craw um, but i absolutely am in love with these leeches i use them all the time uh, if you watch any of my videos you're gonna see um, at some point <laughs> you're gonna see a nico bait come out so that is one of my favorites is the leech another one of my favorites is the helgramite this is probably their no it is their top selling bait it's kind of what put them on the map um, i'm gonna show it to you the amount of detail um, on this bait is really outstanding so i'm gonna go ahead and get all its little appendages out here so you can see it in all its glory this is a heavily used bag. There's like grass and stuff in here. <laughs> Check that out. That is the Helgramite. It's got like the pinchers on top. Unreal. It's got all the little appendages. Same kind of rib body design as the, uh, as the leech. Uh, but this thing is absolutely deadly in the river. I mean, anywhere, but anytime there's like rocks or even muck and marl, this thing is deadly. Uh, this color is also fusion. Again, it's one of my favorite colors. Next up, we're going back to six cents. Uh, this is the Ned Fry. So this is a, like a four point inch worm. Um, it's in cosmic black. This color is unreal. Not a color, I mean, this is like the coolest version of June Bug that you're ever gonna see. So it's like a black, and then I'm gonna try and get the light right. You get purple, uh, you get gold, and you get red, and there's even like a copper, and a, like goldy copper in there. Um, flat on bottom, and then just like this crazy ribbed body. Now, as far as stoutness goes, it's not stretchy, but it's a surprisingly stout worm. Um, not completely invincible, but the nice thing about having like a non-Z-Man bait is that you get like a totally different action. Like people always wanna say like, oh, Z-Man's the absolute best. It's great, I love that elastic material. But sometimes a stiffer bait actually can do just different things in the water because it is just different. So that is awesome. But this is a great profile for a trim worm. I'm a huge fan of either dragging this worm like Carolina style or my new favorite uh, way to fish, um, putting on a shaky head. It's outstanding. Another sixth sense favorite is the Divine Swim Bait. This is a 3.2 inch swim bait. This one is called Ghost Minnow, but it's just an awesome paddle tail. Again, uh, kind of an opaque white, um, 
trim, trim, trim down to a very, uh, like a tilted angle tail. Uh, it does have a rib body, I'm not sure if that helps or not, but it does have a really unique place for you to pull the hook out. These are meant to go with their Divine Swim Jigs, which I actually had an awesome day on uh, about two weeks ago. Um, but these are just a great bait. They come in a couple different sizes. I really like this one for smallmouth fishing. This is the perfect size for smallmouth. And speaking of shaky heads, these are my two, my two newest favorite baits to shaky head. Uh, this is an old one actually that I've sort of rediscovered. This is that KVD Perfect Plastic fat baby finesse worm i think it's just cream pumpkin is that what it's called oh it's called dirt <laughs> what? this is a five inch finesse worm um for a five inch worm it really doesn't show out like a five inch worm it's got a hollow tail here that grabs water kind of like the the bubble butt um, on some of those 13 fishing worms that you see. It's got the flat bottom, and then it's got like the rig point here, just like a regular worm with like a ridged body. Uh, this is a green on top, sort of a brown on bottom, hence the dirt color. It's not really green pumpkin. It's got the black flake all the way through. I have crushed it with this worm. It's an awesome worm. Cool. And the last one is uh, from Z Bait Co. So this is their bamboo bomber. It comes in a gigantic, but fortunately pretty durable package. Uh, so you can really get this one vertically stored, even though it's a big package. It's got their bass syrup on it, which is stinky. Now this is their bamboo bomber. Comes in a seven count, five inch. This one is June bug, which I've had a lot of success with. Um, not an invincible worm by any stretch of the imagination. I would say like average durability, but as a shaky head, I find that I'm gonna rip this up for you and show you really what it can do here. Um, but when you rig it shaky, the back end, instead of tearing off, it just slides up the hook. I've caught five, six fish on one of these. Um, and usually because of this profile, it's a lot bigger fish. And again, this is their June bug. This is like my favorite like color combo. This is a green flake, like an almost black to purple, like hulked out. Um, version you get all those little tentacles there at the back um, which i absolutely am a huge fan of now you can leave this flat and run it like a beaver style i think this is amazing for a carolina rig but shaky head is where it uh, really shows out i'll tell you right now i never would have bought this unless the guys at zba co i actually was able to fortunate enough to meet them at icast this year they said i told them i love your guys's twig which is like their little finesse worm huge fan I told them about they're like have you tried the bamboo bomber no I should go get six packs. So I bought a whole bunch of these and like every color they had in stock. And now I'm glad I did because I really love these. And these are coming with me on that small off trip for sure. All right, so the last box is actually from our good friend, the online outdoorsman, uh, Ethan Duvetter. What phenomenal person, but he owns uh, and sends and operates and does everything for the company Mule Fishing. Again, if you've watched our channel in the past, if, like you know about mule fishing. If you haven't, go back and watch some videos. We are always using these baits. I will show you why. The thing about mule fishing is um, Ethan is, you know, the online outdoorsman, like I already said, but he is a fanatic, and I mean fanatic ultralight fisherman. Um, whenever I have a question about ultralight, he is the first person that I go to. Whenever I'm gonna do something silly with an ultralight, like I'm doing right now, and I don't want him to know about it, I make sure that I don't tell him about it because I know he'll laugh at me. Now, um, these jigs, my, my two favorite sizes, he gets some unbelievably small, tiny, tiny, minuscule sizes. The biggest one that he makes is a 332 ounce jig. This is one of my favorite jigs. My two favorite colors are chartreuse and black. Those are my two favorites. I probably should get more. I do like the white as well they're all good though rounded finesse jig head um, and then i will show you the hook holder in a second but you can probably see it in the package it's got those little hook holders he's got 332 132 180 164 and 116 180 i don't think you can find those anywhere else ultra light finesse jigs what jigs did i get <sighs> I think I mentioned my favorite are the 332. So I got two colors of 332. I re-upped on black and then I got pink, which I've never had before. Uh, really excited to use these, huge fan of pink. Uh, and then on the three, on the 132s, I got a, a slew of them. I got two packs of black, one pack of pink, and then two packs of chartreuse. So that is what these look like. Now these little guys are great. Again, this is a re-up for me. Um, these are my pan fishing slash maybe if I'm uh, in the river hunting some bigs, sometimes downsizing is the way to go. We talked about that earlier. That's when I'm breaking these out. So those are the jigs. Let's get on to the plastics, which I think are probably the coolest thing. Let's start with the small ones. Did I get any small ones? I got some small ones. So what do I pair with that 332? I pair that with the Donkey Tail Junior. This is my favorite color hands down hands down 
I would like to say that it's closer than it is, but it's really not. This is that Dakota Sunrise purple on top. Come on, camera, you can do it. I know you can do it. Purple on top. Golly, that's not gonna do it. I'll get you a bigger one. The Donkey Tail Jr. is like one and a half inches. I think it says 1.6 on the package. So one and a half inch plastic. Um, designed to fit uh, the length of this exact, or I guess maybe the jigs are designed for the plastics chicken the egg i don't know which one's which but these are designed to work together so the 132 and some of the small and, and on down size wise are really meant to work with these doggy tail juniors which is why i have so many you want to know how much i like dakota sunrise in the larger size which is the donkey tail original this is a two and a half inch or 2.8 probably close to a three inch these are all gone now what's really kind of surprising about all of those being gone is that these plastics are actually so much um, like the z-man elastic they are unbelievably stretchy which makes them unbelievably durable now the one thing i like about these is these are much less likely to get waterlogged than those z-man uh, trd uh, plastics which is great, they last even longer. So this is a bigger version of what I actually bought. Um, I actually do need to get more of these. So Ethan, you could, we'll see another order coming soon because I do need these. Um, th this is the most fish catching plastic that I've ever used. I said it, I said it. Now, it catches bass, it catches panfish, it catches pike, it, ca it catches absolutely everything. Smallmouth, largemouth, it does not matter. I've caught my two largest smallmouth on this exact plastic um, with a black head and a chartreuse head in the same day. I, beat, I broke my PB two different times and I broke it the week before on this exact same plastic. So the same plastic, three fish, broke my PB in two weeks. Three times I did it, unbelievable. Love this plastic, crushes on Lake St. Clair, crushes wherever fish are, it's just fish catching like crazy. And then it was just re-up season. Uh, these ones are for me, these are the donkey tails in, uh, I think this is, I always get this wrong, this is the green pumpkin in black. So it's like a green pumpkin with black flake had to have those that's in the regular donkey tail keep those over here oh they make a chartreuse i don't have any of these i've never had these i had to get some of these so the same thing in chartreuse that's the larger donkey tail size got one for jeff you're welcome buddy and then i had to re-up on black black is my second favorite color black actually absolutely smashes my favorite color combo is like batman it's the chartreuse head with the black donkey tail uh original um Bat, black, yellow, old school Batman. That's my Batman, that's my second favorite combo. Um, that is my donkey tail like collection. Uh, I will say that that is a re-up. I can't have enough of these, you really can't. So had to have those for fish in the river. So that is a rundown on what I got for my re-up for the trip that Jeff and I have coming up really soon as well as a look at some of my favorite baits that I use all the time for fishing smallmouth. I hope this was helpful for you please leave a comment down below with your favorite baits for catching smallmouth. I promise I will go check some of those out. Thank you so much for going to watch this video and liking and subscribing, smashing the like button, or ring the notification bell uh, so that you can see we post the next video. We do appreciate y'all so much and please come check us out Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern for the Burley Fishing Live podcast uh, that we stream every single Thursday night. Uh, we'd love to see you there, chit chat, ask us questions uh, and come hang out and talk with all the awesome guests that we have every single week. Thanks again and we will catch you out on the water.